I like to create things, I like to solve problems, and I get so much satisfaction out of um, uh, approaching a problem, you know, having no idea how to solve it, and coming up with a solution that, um, you know, that can amaze me back. And that's something that you can do in programming that I don't think you can do in a lot of other fields. So I really think that there is there has never been a better time to learn how to program, um, and there's especially never been a better time to teach yourself how to program, uh, just because there are so many resources out there on the internet. I mean, when I started, I, I there was no web at the time, so I literally had to go to a bookstore and buy a bunch of books. I'm Sarah, and I work on Twitter's um, Android team. I work on Twitter for Android on our, our mobile team. I've been an engineer here for about three years. Um, I've been working on Android for about a year and a half. Uh, prior to that, I was doing Ruby on Rails and web development. Um, I worked on our first uh, help site, support.twitter.com, and also I worked on our internal tools and our internal revenue tools, so I've jumped around a little bit. My name is Dana. Uh, I've been a software engineer here at Twitter for two and a half years. Um, I started out working on our API, um, and I did that for um, most of the time that I've been here. Uh, but I just recently switched to our revenue team, which is responsible for things like promoted tweets, promoted trends, um, basically keeping the lights on here so we can keep having an awesome product. The day's broken up into mainly two different um, two different modes. Either I'm coding, I'm programming, um, and that's either by myself or sometimes I'll pair with somebody on my team, which is always awesome. It's a great experience to pair with someone and, and be able to bounce your ideas back and forth. And when two people pair, they can really get into a zone um, and everyone knows not to interrupt you when you're when you're in the zone and you're pairing with somebody. So there's that and then there's also the collaborative discussion uh, portion, which uh, happens with you know your teammates and stuff and we, we figure out if we're building the right things and, and if we're building them right. Programming can be a sort of frustrating experience in general. Um, I, somebody tweeted the other day, I can't remember who, but something to the effect that uh, it, the great thing about being in the programming industry is that you're going to be right 1% of the time, and that's okay. Most of the work that I do is not something that you would necessarily see like a tangible thing on the, on the website or on mobile. I really enjoy being able to enable other engineers to do, to do cool stuff, um, and that's, that's kind of been my focus the whole time that I've been here, is making it possible for the other teams here at Twitter to, to really succeed. You know, Twitter really, has a really unique culture. Um, the product in itself is innately social, and I think that really um, resonates throughout the culture of the company. Um, one of the things that we like to say is, is Twitter is made of people, um, which is something that we say when we want to refer to how everyone communicates with each other. There's this sense of collaboration. I think that Twitter has really uh, given a voice to people that haven't, maybe didn't have voices before, or has amplified voices that maybe weren't being heard quite as much. Um, and so I feel really good about that. Uh, you know that there are that there are people out there who can be heard now that you know didn't really have a platform before. Not too long ago, uh, Twitter introduced uh, the Discover tab, which is uh, on on all of our um, on all of our platforms. You there's an area now where you can see. Um, what are the most interesting things that the people you follow and the people that they follow, what are they tweeting about? News articles um, or, you know, things that are just popular on Twitter. Um, and it allows you to kind of discover um, what's happening uh, at any given time, what's happening right now. Um, and uh, we have a pretty sophisticated back-end uh, system that calculates algorithmically what is the most popular stuff happening right now, what's being talked about most. And then on my side, on the Twitter for Android side, I take that data and I display it in a in a nice way and um, make sure it's interactive and uh, make sure it behaves as how you would expect uh, uh, Twitter to behave. We have what we call stand-ups every day, which are like super quick 10-15 minute meetings. Um, we do them standing up, which forces us to get them done quickly because nobody wants to stand up for 30 minutes. Um, but it's really just sort of like a quick check-in so the whole team knows what's going on in the team, like if anyone's having problems so that they can bring those up and that sort of thing. Another really, really big problem that, that I've worked on and that we're still working on and have been working on for almost the whole time I've been here um, is we're moving, we're moving Twitter from, uh, from Ruby to Scala. So a totally different programming language, a totally different paradigm. It's like a totally different way of thinking about uh, computer problems and architecture and things like that. Um, and that's, uh, so that's been it's quite a long road and there's still a long ways to go, but it's been really exciting. One of the greatest opportunities that I've been presented with at Twitter was to run our Women in Engineering group, which I've been doing for maybe about a year and a half now. 
and we do a lot of great things um, in terms of inspiring the next generation of women, which is what our main charter items uh, for the group is. So we run this group and we do things like we hold uh, women in engineering um, meetups and happy hours. We try to get involved in the community when we can. Um, we uh, hosted Technovation earlier in the year. Um, and we also uh, help recruiting, um, especially university recruiting, reach out to the women in CS groups at the different universities, uh, try to make sure that we get as many women involved uh, at, that, at that stage. Being able to keep up with new technologies and um, you know, having, having this idea of lifelong learning, if you'll pardon the cliche, is uh, I think that's probably one of the most important skills that an engineer can have. Um, literally every single job I've had, I've had to learn a new language or a new programming technique or, you know, some new database system. Um, and I, you know, I expect that that will continue for the rest of my career. When I started at Twitter, uh, I had no Ruby on Rails experience. I had web development experience, but no Ruby on Rails experience. But the people that I was working with uh, were experts in the field. So I was able to learn a lot from them and, and um, they mentored me quite a bit, and then when I moved to Android, though I had had Java experience, I had had no previous Android experience. So my um, my tech lead, uh, who had been doing Android for many years, uh, he really helped me get up to speed very quickly. But even more than just having really smart and awesome people around you to help you through, uh, it's really important for you to remember that the internet is a vast wealth of information, and you can learn so much about you know all the changes that are going on. They're all happening on the internet. Um, and I really encourage any aspiring engineer to uh, get involved with the open source community, get their hands dirty right in the, right in the code to see you know, what people are doing, what people are changing um, today. Mm -hmm.